Hey everybody, welcome back to the program. Now today I'm doing a stereo showdown for Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Now it struck me with the release of the 2017 edition, the 50th anniversary, which I'm sure you're all very well aware of, that I now own four copies of Sgt. Pepper's. Now let's go through them real quick. I have the, an original 1967 UK stereo pressing. I also have a 1980s edition, probably 84, 85 UK pressing. Now this is pre-digital. And I also have the 2012 edition. Now this is a remaster, but the remaster actually comes from 2009 for the CD release. And finally, the mother of them all, the double LP 50th anniversary 2017 edition of Sgt. Pepper's. I do want to preface this by saying I listened to all four of these mixes with headphones because I really wanted to focus in on the stereo mix. When you're listening on speakers, you have a lot more outside sound. It's not as isolated. Also, you can't really hear that stereo separation. That was kind of hokey back in 67, but man, did they nail it in 2017. Now, I also want to say that I'm inspired to do this video by Baraka P. Dub, where he does these really cool comparison videos where he'll take like say Led Zeppelin 2 and he goes through all the different versions that he has. He's also done it for Dark Side of the Moon. So if you're interested in more of those, I highly suggest you go check out his channel. Now, before we get started, uh, I just want to clarify that this isn't really going to be a full on review of the 2017 release. I'm not going to be talking about the second record with all the different outtakes. I'm purely going to be talking about a handful of songs that I really felt like the 2017 mix really stood out compared to the previous mixes. And I'll say that between the 67 and 84 pressing, there really isn't much difference. The only real noticeable difference is that my 67 pressing is a little scratched up, so it's not quite as clean. Now, the 2009, 2012 edition, I can't say it's my favorite. It's much cleaner than my 80s pressing in some ways, but I don't like what they did with the bass. They added a lot of extra oomph to the bass, which I take offense to. I, I just don't think they intended it to be that bassy. Also, the drums get really lost in that mix. Now, finally, we have the 2017 edition, and overall, I think it's superb. It's like opening up the record, and it has so much more room to breathe. All these different instruments have their own space. The drums sound better. The bass sounds great. It has None of that overpowered bassiness of that 2012 mix. It just has a fuller tone overall, which I really dig. But the one thing that was sort of unexpected for me was that it wasn't completely different. From what other people were saying before I heard it, I thought like, okay, this is gonna be like some other record I've never heard before. That wasn't the case. But what they did do, I thought they did quite well. Now, Giles Martin, George Martin's son, actually spearheaded this and he went through his father's notes. And what I think is really cool is that back in the day, back in, what, 1967, they were limited by this four-track recorder. So basically, they could only record four tracks at a time. And this record is very complicated, as many of you know. And what I didn't realize is that once they filled up these four tracks, they would then do a pre-mix and send these four tracks to a, another four-track machine, and they put it onto a new tape as track one. And then they would do that again, four more tracks, then bounce that to track two, track three, track four. And I think they did this several times. So the final mix was really several generations removed from the original master tapes. And what that did is that every time you made a new dub, you introduce more tape noise and less fidelity. So for years, we were just kind of left with Sergeant Pepper as it was. And you know, with that technology back then, this is a very complicated record. It sounds great for the time, it really does, but it's nice that they finally went back to the original tapes, the very first tapes, transferred them digitally, cleaned them up, and then what I loved is that they then painstakingly, using his father's notes, recreated the stereo mixes from 1967. So even before they started remastering this mix, they actually recreated those 67 mixes and then they heard them and went, okay, what can we do to make this sound better? And I love the fact that they approached it that way because one of my fears when I went into the 2017 mix, I was worried that it was going to sound so different or modern or just be really compressed or who knows what. But in the end, the changes are subtle and it's more like 
the difference between watching your favorite movie on VHS and then seeing it again on Blu-ray. It's just so much cleaner, sharper. You really start to understand, at least for me, you understand so much more the thought behind what they were doing on this album. And I feel like I love this record so much more than I had in the past because I can hear it so much cleaner. One of the things I really love about the 2017 mix is how clean the drums are. I feel that in previous mixes, they really got lost. They were just kind of down there and they're really, you really couldn't necessarily hear the different drums. It was just kind of a drum sound, but the 2017 mix just really cleans it up, sort of, I wouldn't say brings it up too much in the mix, but it, it fills a space, you know what I mean? Whereas like say the 67 mix was maybe like this narrow, the, tw the 2017 mix is just that much wider. You know, you get a lot more spectrum when you hear this record. Now my only real criticism on the 2017 mix is Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. I don't know what it is, but it just sounds a little off. Let me know what you guys think. Picture yourself in a boat on a river with tangerine trees and marmalade skies. Somebody calls you, you answer quite slow. Now another place where I feel a little unsure of in the 2017 mix is being for the benefit of Mr. Kite. There's this cacophony sort of sound with all these instruments sort of blending all together. And I'm not quite sure if I like it because it's so much crisper now. Like you can hear all the instruments and what exactly they're doing. And it sounds so different from the previous mixes that I, I don't know if I exactly like it yet because it's it's so much it's so much more detailed. But I'm curious what you guys have to say. Check it out. Now for me, one of the standouts is the mix on Within You Without You. Um <laughs> I love it. It's so much crisper now, so much cleaner. I feel like this track didn't quite get the mix that it deserved way back in 67, and it's finally getting the treatment that it always should have, and it really stands out for me. Now another song where it sounds so different from the original mix is Lovely Rita. Lovely Rita, meet a maid, nothing can come between us. When it gets dark, I tow your heart away. Now probably my favorite song off of here is A Day in a Life. And for me, this song really shines in the 2017 mix. I don't know what it was before. Maybe they just had so many instruments in the orchestra when they did the original mix that it just got kind of muddy. But in this mix, it just shines, especially in that moment where the tempo builds and builds and the orchestra gets more and more intense and just, it like holds its place better. Like the, the bandwidth on on the mix is just so much more broad that it can really handle this big swelling movement. Ah, really dig it. Well guys, I gotta say that this is a must own. Even if you already own all these other editions, this is gonna be great in your collection and I think it's gonna be the definitive stereo edition. But I wanna know what you guys have to say. Be sure to leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of this mix, how you think it compares to the previous mixes and did you hear anything that I maybe missed? Let me know in a comment down below. Until then, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. I am your Vinyl Geek and I'll catch you on the flip side. Hey guys, thanks again for checking out my stereo showdown of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Now, if you're interested in my review of the album, be sure to click right there. Or if you want to see more Beatles content, I put a playlist right there. So go ahead and click away.